Hallelujah and blessings in King Jesus, friends. Welcome back to High Kadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And together, God's people say with hearts of joy, Hallelujah. Now, I want to talk to you this morning about a text as I was reading my five chapters last night, something stood out to me that I'd never noticed before. Now, a ways back, many videos ago, I addressed something that may have slipped by you. And so before I address what I want to address this morning, I want to recapture that thought. You see, I can't tell you how many people I meet that talk about all the joy specifically all the reward they're going to receive when they enter into the kingdom. And I even met one man who told me that he wanted everything that he had coming to him. And that didn't settle in my soul well, because that seemed to me to be the same kind of argument that the disciples, Jesus' chosen 12, were making against one another as to who would be first in the kingdom. And yet we know that the principle of a life filled with Christ is about serving others. Jesus even said in this life, the more we give, the more we shall receive. And so a thought came upon me, and I don't want to say that it's Holy Spirit inspired, because then it would be as if I was saying that this was a heavenly truth. And, and I can't say that. But my thought was this. What if when we arrive in the kingdom, we instead of receiving all that the Lord has to give to us, in turn, give everything that we have been given away to other people that have made it into the kingdom? I mean, we know there's going to be different blessing and different reward. And what of one who has just come into the kingdom, maybe in the time of the tribulation period, and didn't have time to store away many rewards that they could have received if they would have received Jesus at a much earlier time in their life? What if we took the abundance of our blessings and gave them to that less fortunate brother or sister? I mean, if that's what we're required to do now, how much more should we be required to do then? You see, if we're living kingdom principles here on earth, would not those same kingdom principles apply in the life to come in the new kingdom? Well, that brings me to the thought that I would like to share with you today, which comes out of Luke chapter 12, and we'll begin at verse 35. Now, Jesus says, let your loins be girded about and your lights burning. Be a witness to all those around you of what Jesus has done for you and how he has changed your life. And let not the reflection be upon you, but upon the Lord who has changed you. And ye yourselves, in verse 36, like unto men that wait for their Lord. Jesus is referring here to our faithfulness, our obedience. If we truly expect the Lord to be coming, we're going to be awaiting his arrival. And if we're truly awaiting his arrival and expecting him, then we should be, we would be living faithfully before him. And so Jesus continues, when the Son of Man, when Jesus, when the Lord returns from the wedding, be as a people that are awaiting the return of their Lord, so that when he comes and he knocks, they may open unto him immediately. They won't delay in opening the door, trying to tidy things up in their lives, trying to make themselves ready for his arrival. They will already be ready for his arrival. And this is the passage I want to share with you this morning, because after reading this many times, this, for the first time, stood out to me. Jesus said, Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Now, this is keeping in context with what he has been saying. He says, Verily I say unto you, truly I say unto you, that he, he would be the Son of Man, the Lord who is returning, 
He's speaking of himself. So you could read it that I, the Lord Jesus, shall gird myself and I will make my servants to sit down to meet. I will make them ready to dine with me. And then notice this. He says, I will come forth and I will serve them. Now stop and think about that for a moment because I've got to admit to you, when I picture the new kingdom or when I did picture the new kingdom, I pictured Jesus upon the throne and all of us living through eternity serving him. Yet we know from Hebrews chapter 13 verse 8 that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, he is the same today, and he is the same forever. So the same Jesus that we see on planet earth through Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the early chapters of Acts is the same Jesus that we're going to see in the new kingdom. And this is the thought that I had. What if when we arrive in the kingdom, the very first thing that takes place is that Jesus comes before us, kneels before us, takes our sandals or our shoes off of our feet and washes our feet. He, the Lord of glory, the Lamb of God, the King of the universe, bows before us. Fallen, sinful men and women, he bows before us and washes our feet. If Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, and his greatest act of service was the service that he provided unto all those who stood before him, shall he not be the same in the new kingdom? Shall there not be many ways that the Lord finds to serve us, his people, throughout eternity? What a change in a mindset that is even now, friends. It's not to take away his kingship. It's not to take away his lordship. It's not even to take away his godhood or his godness. He is God. He always will be God. But the principles of Jesus' life and the very heart of the word of God is to love God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And so when we look into the new kingdom, Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords, should we not see him humbling himself, lowering himself in the lowest of ways and serving his people throughout all time? And do we not find ourselves saying unto the Lord, I am not worthy for you to do such an act, to perform such a deed. And yet, as he said to Peter, he looks unto us and says, you will have no part in the kingdom unless you allow me to do this. Because even in the humility that it takes for me to perform this deed, so it takes humility for you to allow me to do this unto you. I, your Lord, I, your King, to serve you in the most meekest of ways. And will we not always for eternity learn from his example? For look again at what the text says. It says in verse 36, you yourselves will be like unto men that wait for their Lord when he will return from the wedding, that when he cometh and knocketh, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he cometh, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and he will come forth and he will serve them. That's what Jesus meant in Luke chapter 22. And beginning at verse 25, he said unto the disciples who were quarreling over who will be greatest in the kingdom, he says, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them, and they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so. He that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. Well, who is greatest among us? Jesus. Who is our chief? Jesus. 
So if Jesus's commands is for us to become the least, so shall he not himself become the least among us? Oh, friends, I don't know about you, but what a difference that makes in our view of the kingdom of Jesus, our Lord, and not only of how we should represent ourselves in this life, but how we will represent ourselves and live our lives throughout all eternity. The servants of all, all the principles that we follow that God has given us in this life will follow us into the new life. And the greatest of those principles amongst us as brothers and sisters in Christ is to love each other as we would love ourselves. And as short as we fall in doing that in this life, we will meet with great levels of success in the new kingdom because we will spend eternity loving others as ourselves, seeking to give and to serve rather than to receive and to be served. And Jesus has been the greatest example in the past, in today, and in the future to come for us. For truly, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And as we are told in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, Take my yoke upon you, says Jesus. Learn of me, for I am meek. I was meek, and I will always be meek and lowly in heart. And there you shall find rest for your souls. Oh, friends, I encourage you to meditate upon that today, to ponder that today. And as we close today, let me again leave you with this idea. You have passed from this life. You are standing and gazing into the eternal light of heaven. Jesus walks up to you, bows before you, looks into your eyes, takes a basin, a towel, and begins to wash your feet. You see, as you seek to fulfill your mission unto God by serving others and seeking new ways to do so, so shall our Lord in serving us throughout all eternity. Hallelujah, friends. What a blessed God we serve. He who came to give us example, no greater example could be given. Well, I love you, friends. I'm so grateful again that you're with us. Now, I pray that your journey will be blessed today. Your eyes will be enlightened to new truth and your heart will be full of joy and praise. Now, as he, our king, so wills. And until next time, I'll see you on the next video.